Russia's Romanov imperial dynasty kept a regular order with Peter Karl Faberge to make jeweled Easter eggs throughout the final decades of their rule. Here is the history of some of the most significant artistic creations that came up as a result of this extraordinary commission. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel before we proceed with our video. Faberge, whose father Gustav established the namesake company, produced 50 eggs for the royal family, of which 43 are still in existence. He was given creative power after the first egg, and from that point until the piece's premiere, specifics about each successive creation were kept a secret, even from the Tsar. Faberge controlled the process, but the eggs were made by groups of metalworkers, jewelers, designers, and other professionals who were given a lot of artistic freedom. Even though the eggs were created of expensive materials, their value was not determined by how much money was spent on the specific jewels or metals, some eggs were rather inexpensive in that aspect, but rather by the creativity and talent the artists put into each one. The eggs were confiscated when the Bolsheviks overran St. Petersburg. Some of them were sold, while others were kept. Each component has since embarked on its own adventure since that time. The market was swamped with Romanov art and objects in the early years, so the eggs weren't highly sought for. However, as time went on, collectors became increasingly interested, most notably media mogul Malcolm Forbes, whose art collection once featured nine eggs. They fetch tens of millions of dollars on the market now. The eggs are one of the few examples of decorative art that has a variety of layers that change with time. They offer a close-up look into the family for whom they were built, as well as a tactile and visual history of a 32-year virtuoso display by one of the foremost jewelry and art companies in the world. Since being introduced to the global art market, they have also taken on a new existence, appearing and vanishing in both private and public collections, with some appearing to be lost forever and others being recovered from obscurity by serendipity or tenacious research. Alma Teresa Pill one of two women who worked as designers at the House of Faberge at the start of the 20th century, was the brains behind a pair of the most renowned eggs. She sprung from a long line of distinguished craftspeople who worked for Faberge. Her grandpa was the company's chief jeweler and her uncle was a celebrated goldsmith. The Winter Egg and the Mosaic Egg, both created by Pill, made their debuts in 1913. Tsar Nicholas II ordered the mosaic as a present for Empress Alexandra, it has marquetry that Alma based on an embroidery pattern. The British royal family, including Queen Elizabeth II, currently owns the mosaic egg as part of their collection. The first egg Faberge created for the Russian royal family was meant to be a one-of-a-kind gift from Tsar Alexander III to his wife, Empress Maria Fyodorovna, in observance of Easter and, it is alleged, to divert her attention from a wave of terrorist attacks that had been launched against the imperial court. The golden yoke that opened to reveal a golden hen resting on golden straw was hidden inside the gold banded, enamel encased egg. The hen also concealed a surprise, a ruby pendant and a little diamond copy of the imperial crown. The Tsarina was delighted with the present, and the Tsar soon ordered another egg for the next year since its design resembled one she had seen as a kid at the Danish royal court. The hen egg which was once owned by Malcolm Forbes, is now in the Faberge Museum's collection and is owned by Russian businessman Victor Vexelberg. Snow Egg, 1913 The eggs have generated a distinct body of scholarship throughout the years, and Gaza von Habsburg, who is 80 years old, is one of the most knowledgeable authorities. He is the curator for Faberge, and he is capable of reciting a never-ending list of details and fervent justifications for the relative qualities of each egg. Which one does he prefer? He recently referred to the egg presented by Tsar Nicholas II to his mother, the Dowager Empress Maria Fyodorovna in 1913, as definitely the winter egg, which was created by Alma Teresa Pill. I had the pleasure of touching it in my hands and closely examining it. Although it was smaller than I had anticipated, the level of craftsmanship was astounding. Rock crystal that has been cut into an egg is as thin as glass. The egg is adorned with engraving and frost-like platinum and diamond embellishments, and it stands atop a rock crystal foundation that is modeled after a melting block of ice. The surprise is a platinum basket filled with anemones and flowers that is set with one, 378 diamonds in fashion of gold and demantoid garnets. A private collector purchased the egg in 2002 for $9.6 million at auction. Egg of Coronation, 1897 This egg, 
which Tsar Nicholas II gave to Empress Alexandra as a souvenir of their 1896 coronation, is encased in multicolored gold and adorned with enamel. The artwork has a detachable miniature reproduction of a coach made for Catherine the Great and used to shuttle Romanov emperors to and from events. According to von Habsburg, the carriage has the kind of incredibly lifelike details that distinguish Faberge's creations. It is fully equipped with moving wheels, opening doors, working seat spring shock absorbers, and a little folding step stair. A big portrait cut diamond with the Empress's monogram visible through its table is one of the surprises, as is a cluster of ten brilliant diamonds put in the top of the egg. At the opposite, narrower end, a smaller portrait diamond is encircled by a floral design comprised of twenty thin gold petals and placed within a cluster of rose diamonds. The portrait diamond covers the date here. Malcolm Forbes bought the coronation egg in 1979, and it is now a part of the Victor Vexelberg collection kept in the Faberge Museum. 1887 Third Imperial Easter Egg The Third Imperial Egg, which Tsar Alexander III gave to Empress Maria Fyodorovna, was one of the numerous artifacts taken from the Romanovs during the Russian Revolution and later sold by the Bolsheviks to Western collectors to pay for their new government, the practice was known as treasures detractors. The egg vanished from public records and was assumed to be lost until it was traded at an antiques market in the United States in 2010 without the knowledge of the seller or the buyer. A Midwest junk dealer had bought the egg with the intention of selling its components for a rapid profit, but he soon discovered that his investment would not be repaid. He started looking for alternatives, and in 2011 he came across a report in the British newspaper The Daily Telegraph about a frantic search for a 3.2-inch tall egg that was perched on a fancy gold stand with lion paw feet, embellished with sapphires, and featured a button made of diamonds that, when pressed, unlocked the egg to reveal a Vacheron Constantine clock. The scrap dealer took the item to London experts who determined that the trinket, which he had paid $13,302 for and intended to melt down for its gold, was actually worth $33 million. The egg is currently kept in a private collection. 1894 Renaissance Egg The final egg Alexander III gave to Empress Maria was modeled after an oval agate coffin made by Dutch craftsman Leroy and housed in the Dresden Grunes Jolb. The Resurrection Egg, a jeweled rock crystal egg made by Faberge that had dimensions that would have allowed it to fit perfectly inside the Renaissance egg, is what some people believe it to be. Others, including Malcolm Forbes's son Christopher, believe it to be a bed of pearls. The piece's custody history provides a glimpse into the varied amounts of interest that famous private and public collectors have had in the eggs throughout the past century. The Renaissance egg and nine other works of art were purchased by American oil tycoon and collector Armand Hammer, the great-grandfather of actor Army Hammer, after World War I for just 1,500 rubles, or roughly $12,000. In 1937, he sold the Renaissance egg to British aristocrat and film producer Henry Talbot Davery Clifton. This is it for today's video. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more.